Uh, welcome back. We are with Aethaker and Skalor for Mario Mentorum. Just have the one which we'll get from this quest. So. What's is upstairs? So, <clears throat> fortunately, we can provide you with a teleport core. Check my audio settings here. Yeah, turn it down earlier. <clears throat> Offline, I turned it down. Right now, growing, growing weight seems to be a trend in the track. Let me keep it back to five. The alcohol is right behind the stove, but it seems to be locked. I guess we'll just have to go and find whoever has the key. Growing weight, enough. If you are not else, else to tell us in the final days, you need only say so. You can ill afford to be wasting time here, as you well know. Did you yourself not tell us we must act quickly? Yes, yes we did, but the moon was to be a perfect paradise for the people of Atheris. And they're running out of time to make every, everything ready for their arrival. I hoped you'd see the wonders you had to offer, but you found nothing but faults and flaws in our work. Only one of you saw our potential, so you others must be kept here. Ah, so that's Living Way's game. Run around, run us around in circles, and if you're failing that, lock us away so we can we can't put the plan at risk. Everyone except Orion. He understands what's at stake. It must be done. I fear you misjudge us, growing man. Never have we decried the notion of using the moons as a means of escape. That said, my heart breaks at the thought of abandoning Etheris and her reflections to their doom. There is a way to avert the final days. I wish to find it. We all do. We may fail, but our efforts would not be, be at the expense of your plans. But why would you take that risk? There is no room for ifs and maybes now. People of the Theris will escape here to the moon. They'll be safe. They'll finally get to see all their happy, smiling faces. I'm sorry, but we can't let you leave. We just can't. Do what you must, but try not to hurt them. I'll be back in a moment. Don't do anything rash while I'm gone. They'll overwhelm us with sheer numbers. I say we knock these ones out, split up, and make our way to the east. Agreed. Let us reconvey where Argo streets outside. Yes. Fire and Moonstone.
Yes, it did. Good, you're here. You must go to the Watcher's Palace and find Royal Jane. And uh, what, pray tell, do we seek at the Watcher's Palace? prepare for their journey here and beyond. Forgive me, Living Way, but I cannot in good conscience proceed with this plan. Huh? But what about the final days? The death and the doom? Oh, we have to hurry before it's too late! Your unflagging commitment to your duty is endearing, to say the least. Oh, bugger! Be at ease. They bear you no grudge, nor do I. How could we, having come to understand your purpose? For millennia, you and yours work tirelessly towards the singular purpose of this heavenly vessel's construction. An arduous feat by any measure. It is clear you have spared no effort. Why, your very names are a testament to your dedication. Our... our names? I'm not sure I understand what you're getting at. Names are an expression of the self, a declaration of one's hopes and aspirations. Your use of contemporary, uncomplicated nomenclature doth ensure clarity of purpose. There can be no doubt that your love for the people of Atheris is boundless and pure. Anticipation of the day when this vessel might be needed. All I've ever wanted was to meet those she cherished so dearly. To serve and serve well. That goes for all of us, don't you see? So help us. Help us help them. Lead them here where we can keep them safe. If there's anything wrong with what we've built, we'll fix it. We'll make it right.
Your works want not for repair. Yet there remaineth much for you to learn of men, and your own kin besides. Singing way, thy name bespeaketh more than the simple marriage of rhythm and rhyme. The songs of Etheris are beyond counting, and span the length and breadth of emotion. Maps are monuments to man's pioneering spirit and his devotion to charting the furthest reaches of our star. Many have devoted their lifetimes to exploratory pursuits, to venture unto the highest mountains and the deepest oceans in search of unknown frontiers. And thou, my friend, I... Oh, I do not think we've met. My... My name is Puddingway. Puddingway? Yes, indeed. A name of deep and abiding significance, I'm sure. <laughs> but one perhaps better communicated through delicious deeds than tasteless words. There we go. Good, good, good. A judicious good. application of fey magics at a later juncture may be appropriate. <laughs> <clears throat> and living way. <laughs> Tis no easy feat to convey the significance of thy moniker. Hmm. When I was a bookish boy, a dear friend of mine was fond of peppering me with questions as I read, to my occasional annoyance. One day, I posed to her a question of mine own. What doth it mean to live? After much contemplation, she proffered this answer. The anticipation of a half-read story's conclusion. The hope today's mistake may serve as tomorrow's lesson. The wish that a new acquaintance may one day call thee friend. She believed it to be all these moments and more. I... I want to understand, but... I, too, still labor to find mine own answer. T'would be my pleasure to assist you and yours in embarking on a journey of self-discovery and enlightenment. For thee. Ink as blue as the waters of Etheris. Made in haste, though I assure thee, the quality has not suffered for it. The people need not be persuaded by honeyed words. Nay, I have faith they shall do what is right in due course. Until they do, I beg your patience, friends. And with that ink, let us fill the empty pages of Living Ways Compendium. An open exchange of ideas will surely afford you all a better understanding of modern man, and with it, ideas for improvements and renovations. But more importantly, it shall empower us to together find a way forward. I hope you're right. Thank you for this lovely gift. There you have it. I shall remain with the Loperets to ensure that all is in order. Though we must needs prepare for every eventuality, you would all agree that the evacuation of our star is a last resort. To accept failure is to accept the demise not only of our star, but that of Reen's, of all reflections, and the souls that call them home. Which is why I have every faith that you shall fight to the last, that such drastic measures may prove unnecessary. Should the worst come to the worst, 
and I pray deeply that it won't. I'll take comfort in knowing preparations were made under your watchful eye. Aye, thou mayest be assured that if calamity cometh, not a soul will be left behind, if being the operative term. What is that thing you have in a position? Oh, no, I didn't want to skip that. Oh, shit. Okay, we'll get this quest. We'll get to a book. We'll watch that full thing. Hold on. It was a relief to see Living Way who was pleased with my gift of ink. To serve and serve well. Though their knowledge may be lacking, their boundless love is a blessing without peer. It will be no easy task to prepare them for what must needs be done. But gladly do I embrace this duty, even if it doth necessitate that we part ways for a time. Forgive me my absence, but I have the utmost faith in you in all our fellow scions. And when next I return to Atheris, I plan to find you all in good health and good spirits. Okay. But we are going to make a quick trip uh, to Old Charlie. In the interim. So we can watch that cinematic because uh, cutscene because it has important information. In order to see the, to rewatch the cutscenes, we have to have completed the quest. So that's why I completed the quest before the year. Damn this cook! I need mean, to hit spacebar. One cutscene. Skip through part of this till we get to the point where the water comes in. And uh, what, pray tell, do we? All right. Oh, Forgive me, living way. That's for uh, press the right button. Huh? <laughs> I, I love watching this part. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> love the leopards. Be at ease. For millennia. It is clear. Name. Your youth. They can be. We. That's. For. Hola. Back. Aye. 
phút Think cuz The people and then stop clicking as soon as it's large but more There you have it. Though we must... To ex... Which is why... Should the work... I... Here we go. That's loud. Okay, move wow. to your possession. Oh, uh, I got it from Heidelin. Oh, oh, very like her. Guided by its light, you may come to know her true intentions. Intentions which remain a mystery to us. In our time, we called it Elpis. You would be well to remember the name. Nothing of it. We haven't been the most gracious of guests. Do convey our apologies to Growing Way and the others. But of course! And when next we welcome more guests from Atheris, we'll have learned to be much more hospitable hosts. Oh, and circling back to the matter of inappropriate secrecy, we ought to discuss our benefactors. Agreed. The Charlian Forum, yes? The more I heard, the more obvious it became. The forum's aims align closely with those of your anonymous patrons. A telling coincidence would be an understatement. Though had we not taken it upon ourselves to peruse certain restricted tones in Labyrinthos, we might still be unaware of their plans. But let us continue this discussion upon our return. I dare say we have kept Alphano and the others waiting long enough. See, there, were, there was a lot in that cutscene. I needed to get that. <laughs> Alright, back. <laughs> back to Mario and Mario Learn Tour. Yes, I spent like over 2,000 gold just to track her guild to, uh, to, to do that. But it was important because my freaking disc clicks missed button presses. No excursion to the moon concluded. The Shrillo's keen to return to Atheris. Now that we know, the, the planet isn't called Hyalin. The planet is called Atheris. People called it Hyalin because Hyalin, other crystal, etc. That's why it was called Hyalin in our time. Now we find out that its original name was called Atheris. With the Lopretz and or Yanji's capable hands. We needn't worry about affairs here in our absence. Knowing now the face of their earthly collaborators, there is much to discuss with Alphano and the others. Let's return to the Tower of Babel. Our battle with the star will soon begin in earnest and must be prepared. Scarcely believe we went to the moon and back. 
And we'd uh, have time to reflect on that later. Right now, we need to head back to Camp Broken Glass and deliver a thorough detailed report to the BCA. I'd like very much to know how everyone is getting on here as well. It'll only just be done to retreat the, retreat the tempered prisoners when we left. I share your courtesy, but warning our allies that the final days is of greater importance. I speak not only of the contingent, of course. The head of state of every nation must know what we have done. We know not when or where and what manner the final days will begin to manifest, and so we must see that everyone is prepared. Agreed, though we may wish to stress the importance of, the, of discretion, as the public be sent into a panic. Not that every, anyone in the position of responsibility should need to be told of this action, but it bears repeating. Anyway, first things first, Camp Burton last. I accidentally went through the great work. <laughs> Ugh, wasted guilt. Good to see you all again. No worse for your lunar adventure, I hope. We've done what we can for now, and I believe and believe me, we intend to tell you all about it. But before we do, might we tell tell us what's become of Galdemald in our absence? We succeeded in subduing the tempered inside the Tower of Battle. We took many alive, but come up. Combined with those who are already in our custody, the number of required care has grown exponentially. Inclement conditions here have made it difficult, not impossible, to treat them all. We have petitioned the aid of the Allied nations. Some are understandably hesitant to crawl for assistance, particularly those that were but recently subjected to imperial occupation. That said, several others have agreed to grant them refuge for treatment. With the assistance of your fellow scions, we endeavor to see them safely transported and subsequently cured of their temporary. Will all the temporary be locate, relocated? No, not all, no. We have sufficient shelter to attend to those whose treatment has begun, and enough healers with vol have volunteered to remain until their patients have recovered. Eulis is one such patient, though he is not yet fit to receive visitors. Strictly told, it was a miracle he and those in his company were not harmed in the chaos. Not for Alphano and Alize's timely assistance, I dare say none of them would, would be with us today. In light of recent developments, have the Alliance leaders come to any decision regarding Garlemald? Given the tremendous ramifications of what has happened here, it will take time to determine what must be done. In the meantime, they intend to work with the Instern Alliance to keep a close watch over the provinces. We have other news to share. Shortly after Anima was defeated, we received reports that each and every tower has vanished. For Mercy, the process was apparently not quite as violent as that you experienced in Thavnir. Those who were trapped within have been rescued and are receiving treatment. To hasten the, this endeavor, the Beast Tribes have received instruction with the magic needed to cure temporary. Master Matoya is no doubt thrilled the Mother Poxy for, for affords her so many visitors. Yes, we are grateful for her ongoing efforts as well as those of our comrades near and far. As for the contingent, several of our members have been granted leave to return to their homelands after the transfer of Tempered have been, has been completed. Lucia and I will remain, along with the small force to continue offering aid to those here in Garlemald. The Empire may be no more, but there, is yet the, there are yet those who call these lands home. I believe that accounts for recent events here. So what are the moon and the Telophorae? Exposition! I got some fancy new equipment. I 
final days, Roth's prey of victory would mark the end of troubles. There is still much we do not know, but the Alliance leaders must be told. Would you be willing to contact them in our stead? Yes, of course. I will send word forthwith. We'll also receive your fellow signs for their pres release your fellow signs for their present duties, that they may return to Charlene. Your energies are better spent finding a means to avert the coming goblin apocalypse. Speaking of your fellow signs, you'd be happy to hear that Mistress Kral, though still on the mend, has been moved to the Baldessian Annex and given into Tara's care. Thank you. I look forward to seeing them both upon the return. Let us be on our way, then. One last thing, if I may. After your confrontation with Zodiac, you said Xenos took his leave, and in all likelihood he has returned here to Garlemald. I have a mind to dispatch scouts to try and ascertain his whereabouts, but first wish to ask if you, you believe there is merit in doing so. Expect a trail of destruction to follow, you will find one. Aye, you are the only foe he considers worthy. And even if my men found him, who but you would have even hope to bring them up that monster? Pray forget I entertain the notion. While on the subject to Xenos, the Tenth Legion has made an official proclamation. They denounce the crown prince and condemn his role in the Empire's downfall. His very title has become a source of shame among his former subjects, and it continued use serves only to hinder relations with foreign nations. For this reason, we have declared he has been declared as Xenos Viator Galvus, outcast and enemy of God. Daniel is no more, now his own people turn against him. Seems he's not but his bloodlust to keep him company. Better than that than an army to see it sated. At any rate, I will not keep you longer. I pray you put a safe passage back to Strahd. Just here, so I could watch a cinematic. Welcome back, Amikos. We were so terribly worried about you, though it is plain that it has caused my own fair share of worry, and for that, I apologize. Eidolon called to me that day when you entered the Tower of Babel. Please were faint but desperate, and I knew at once she required a vessel to carry out her will. What came after feels like a dream, a dream barely remembered, my body flowing through the live stream to old guard. When I regained consciousness, I was all aches and frostbite, exhausted by Exhausted with ether. So exhausted, in fact, I could only laugh, for it was at that moment that I understood Raha's weariness from the Tower of Vault. Would that I could laugh at a time like this, though we prevented Zodiac from being unleashed upon the world, I'm curious to know what else took place there. Hmm. Exposition. Ah, perchance we will wait for the others to join us before we can bark out. Let us reconvene the main hall once they've arrived.
Wait for your comrades to arrive. Sorry to have kept you all waiting. Not at all. We understand you have been quite busy. Will Orange be joining us? Judy keeps him away, I'm afraid. Though Emigos can explain one better than I. Exposition! I think it's more they just didn't want to write this conversation, so they gave it to me, which never actually has any words besides the few uh, choice options. Final days. They fell Amarant. And we were to escape via the moon, but the source and its reflections. I have no intention of standing by while the world falls to ruin. So, what? how do we stop this? Unfortunately, we have no answers at present. If the celestial currents have get grown stagnant, as, as was the case in the time of Amarat, the solution would be to alter the flow of ether throughout the entirety of the star. The ancients accomplish this by summoning Zodiac, sacrificing half the star's population in Dewey, but it would go without saying that such a sacrifice must not, cannot be repeated. Which should leave us with the daunting task of identifying the underlying catalyst for the final days, a feat which even the Amaratines could not accomplish. Unfortunately, we found no clues in Mare, Mare Lamentor. There is still much we do not, not know about the catastrophe itself, let alone what may have caused it. The final days are marked by the corruption of the Amartine's creation magics, but we command no such power, which invites the questions, what havoc is in store for us? If we knew that much, perhaps we would draw some parallel with the events of the past and therefore form some semblance of the plan. Perhaps we should start with the form, then. Always Having worked with the Lopperts in secret at this time, there's sure the more they can tell us. Forgive the interruptions, but of urgent news. The Forum is holding a public assembly in the plaza outside, some sort of announcement. What is Father up to now? There's only one way to find out. say I thank you all for gathering here on such short notice this day we must speak of grave affairs and their implications for the future of Charlian nay of this very star said affairs concern all citizens so we have called for a public assembly. You may have heard rumors of the Talophoroi and the havoc these madmen wreak abroad. Under normal circumstances, we would pay little heed to petty disturbances outside our borders. The final days, however, are another matter altogether. for we dare not ignore these prophetic words of Eld. 
The end bearers will come, ushering chaos and calamity. The final days descend and devour the very star. I've never heard this prophecy. Is it true? Will all that really happen? Calm yourselves. The time has come to speak of the Forum's most sacred duties. But first... Give voice to the voiceless. Let bindings be unbound. By unanimous decree, I declare the enchantment broken. Master Leveilleur, if you would. Very well. Two hundred and seventy years ago, our forebears began an expedition in the Dravanian hinterlands, in search of a route to access the Ethereal Sea. This much is public knowledge. Their findings, however, would become the Forum's most closely guarded secret. What those researchers discovered in the Hinterlands was not a passage unto the Ethereal Sea, but the very heart of our star, and Hydaelyn herself. She spoke to them of a calamity that would extinguish all life and of a means by which we might be spared. The moon. Tis in truth, a gargantuan vessel built to serve as sanctuary for her children and deliver them from this doom. Much like Nuncref's hope in ages past, it will bear the people of a world in the throes of death to a new home. Needless to say, this will be no small undertaking. To facilitate the great work, the Forum has maintained close contact with the servants of Hydaelyn, who presently reside on the moon. Convinced that the foretold end was all but inevitable, we began amassing a wealth of knowledge, not merely for the betterment of our nation, but in preparation for the journey to come. You reveal this to us now? By the gods, how long do we have? While we cannot say with certainty, we believe the hour to be nigh. We received a transmission from the moon suggesting as much not long ago. Which is why we must in earnest begin preparations for the great exodus. For his impressive contributions and the leadership he demonstrated during our withdrawal from Dravania, we have elected Master Leveilleur to oversee this initiative. Fellow scribes and scholars, my countrymen, we face a threat of unprecedented scale. We must challenge the trials before us with composure and conviction if we are to find salvation. The wisdom of Charlian has ever been a shining beacon in the darkness, and so it shall continue to be. It is our solemn charge to see our heritage preserved for future generations, for those who will come after we will brave a new frontier.
Administrative edicts will be relayed to all major institutions ere long. In the meantime, carry on with your duties. With that, I hereby call this assembly to a close. remember what mother told us when we visited home. That it wasn't until after we were born that father seemed to lose himself in his work. If that great work of his was the evacuation of this star, then... Yes. It wasn't for his benefit. Would you mind waiting here a moment? I wish to speak with Father before we leave. Oh. Keep it civil, man. Yeah. <laughs> I may look daggers at him, but I will neither speak nor draw them. If it's all the same to you, I have a few choice words to share with Father as well. Hey, same goes for you, Alice. <laughs> Especially for you. So, come to call us cowards and bid us join your fruitless battle against the inevitable. Nay, we do not object to the Forum's proposal. On the contrary, those who wish to flee have every right to do so. Orianger is cooperating with your associates on the moon to ensure that all is ready should evacuation be our only recourse. Then whatever your business, I suggest you be brief. Though we cannot boast the boundless wisdom of Charlian, we have first-hand knowledge of foreign cultures and have conversed with no small number of peoples. These experiences have taught us fundamental truths that cannot be recorded in any tome, nor charted on any map. The beating heart of this planet is its people, many of whom would give anything, even their lives, to protect the lands they love. Many may choose to join you in the end. But what of those unwilling or unable, for whom escape will never be an option? What would you have them do? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, Father. It is indolence. This is why we choose to fight. We'll not ask for your understanding, Father. Only that you don't turn a blind eye to the good we have done. That we can still do. We're not children in need of protection. Hold fast to your principles and let the world burn if it please. But we believe there is still another way. And if there is, we will find it. You see if we don't. Do as you will. Just stay out of our way. Were he not so consumed with self-righteousness, he might tell you how proud he is of you both. Bold words call for bold action, and there'll be no turning to your father should plans go awry. As if I ever would. So long as there are those who wish to stay and fight for this star, we have to do what we can to help them. And if we're to do that, we'll need to be well rested. Wouldn't you agree? And having triumphed over what we once thought to be the source of all evil, 
I can think of no one in greater need of at least a dozen winks. Shall we then? To the Annex. To prepare for tomorrow. For bed. The choir tells me the form made a moment of the announcement, so there will be great exodus, is there? Reminded of my no escape from the Isle of Val. Realization that the, the run, the mixture of relief and regret after. Why me? Why me? Why us? Why no? I wonder. No use fretting over the cosmic morality or lack thereof. We're here and we'll get through this together. Who knows, maybe my luck will rub off and grant everyone a narrow escape. No harm in praying for this much. Oh, and enough of my rambling. I'm sure you're exhausted. The shambo awaits. And I get a hat. Which most likely will not be visible on my person. Because I'm scarred. Hats don't work well with. don't work. That compatible with Hrothgar. The visitor comes knocking at the door. Whoever could it be? In other words, choose who you want to answer this door. This is literally this. I could pick anybody here and it would be that person. Who do I want to talk to? I actually talked to, to Graha. I get to I kind of want to talk to Thank right now. It's whoever I choose. Evening. I hoped you hadn't crawled beneath the covers just yet. If you'll indulge me for a moment, I have a favor to ask. Don't worry. Nothing desperate or dire, if that's what you were wondering. Not yet. You know, we may have quite literally entered our final days. The ancients went so far as to call it that for a reason. If so, then everything we did for Reen, for the first, will have been meaningless. And I can't accept that. I just can't. My mind won't allow for the possibility. And that could be a problem. When we're in the thick of it, I don't know if I've got it in me to be pragmatic this time. To run. Even if running's the right choice. The only choice. So if you see me turning a blind eye to the harsh reality, beat some sense into me, would you? <laughs> I trust you and the other Scions with my life. And I'd like to think the feeling is at least occasionally mutual. And I never forgive myself if my stubbornness put them in danger. 
Gods, listen to me. Beginning to sound like the father I never had. So, can I count on you to keep me in line? I can think of no one else more eminently qualified. Excellent. Up. Probably now I can breathe a bit easier. Up. Which isn't to say that I will, given what we're up against. Let's keep this little chat our secret. I'd rather not have anyone scolding us for burning the midnight oil. It really did get me here. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm an amigo. Thank the gods that tower is gone. The sight of it was enough to make me sick. Thank the Ilsebar contingent, more like. Word is, they fought their way into Garlemald and toppled the bloody thing themselves. Not just the one, neither. All the towers have up and vanished. Aye, I heard the same. Commander Aldin and his troops helped keep casualties to a minimum, too. But is it true they brought back tempered Galleon soldiers? As Commander Aldin tells it, they've a treatment for that now. But don't you worry. Cured or not, They've no plans to bring them into the city proper. I see. Well, that's a relief then. I know we've brothers and sisters among the lot, but I can't say I'm eager to welcome them home. Wanted to think about it for a while yet. Yeah. It's to be looked after in Alagana for the time being. Another day, another commission of paramount importance. Well, what have we here? Hmm. Hey, are you all right? That? No. The shadows play tricks. Nothing more. The towers are gone. And the Garlean threat is abated. And yet... Why does it feel as though it's about to get much... much worse?
Taro is furring her brow in consternation. Oh, Emikos, I was just about to call call for you. I'm afraid we've received another call of assistance. This one comes from Mata. The others have assembled in the main hall to discuss the situation. You must join them at once. Ah, there you are. Our worst fears has come to pass, but moments ago we received grim tidings from our contact in Ratsatan. Vile Vs has appeared as if out of nowhere, claiming one victim after the next. What's more, they say their very sky burns above them. Good gods, are the final days already upon us? It would appear so. Sadly, this is all the information we have at present. No doubt the people of Ratsatana are busy fighting for their lives. Then we must go at once. They need our help. Agreed. Kral, you'd best remain here with Totaru and regain, gather what knowledge you can. We are in no condition for you are in no condition for a long journey, I imagine. Very well. Similar phenomena may be, have been observed elsewhere, and if so, we must know what, about it at once. Leave the Lalafels behind. Be safe out there, yes? Let us, f let us f make first for Yedl's part. Prepare ourselves for what may lie ahead. All right, first things first, I got a headgear coffer, so I'm going to use that. Does it appear in my head? Oh. Need this avenue. It'll mod. And lo, vile beasts did rise. Leaving naught in their wake but blood and ash. The sun scorches earth and boils seas. And our sins ascend unto the heavens. Three dooms to unmake all we were. Burns. The final days are truly upon us. My friends, I trust you have heard the news. We have. What can you tell us of the situation, Your Excellency? Last night, the isle was rocked by tremors, and the earth itself cried out. Aloft, the heavens began to burn. 
from all about. Unholy beasts, the likes of which we had never seen, came forth in fury and rage. No. To say they came forth would be... inexact. The people of Radzat Han themselves transformed into these baleful fiends. Though the phenomenon was observed throughout our lands, the first creature, the largest and most dreadful of the lot, wrought havoc upon us here in our fair city. Though they bear superficial resemblance to divinities of legend, they are ungodly abominations. The people decry them as blasphemies. The Large One's rampage has since taken it to the northern reaches of the island. I mean to dispatch our radiant host in an attempt to quell the threat. And what of Vritra? Vitra too makes for the north of his own accord, and yet... He knows the blasphemy and its minions were but yesterday his beloved people. I pray his boundless compassion and mercy does not deter him from taking unenviable but necessary action. Understood. I ask that you allow us to aid you in quelling this threat. You would risk your lives to help us yet again? I have no words to express my gratitude. Our regiments approach the north from several directions, with a number of units set to depart from the docks of Yedlimad. They will make landfall in an area of dense jungle, where one can expect to encounter dangers even beyond the fell beasts we hunt. I leave you to your preparation. You will find me at the docks when you are ready to depart. We're as prepared as we'll ever be. Let's go. Assemble, yes? I thank you for lending us your aid in a battle against the blasphemy. Let us review our plan of attack. I would have you board this boat and circle around to the north side of the island. There you will find the dense jungle we call Vanaspat. It is a sacred boat, home to many temples and a number of villages. Vitra and the Radiant Host have gone there ahead of us. I ask that you join them and do all your power to destroy this blast. This is Amara. Amra was a reflection of the past final days. This is essentially the current version of Amra. Let's right. talk to Elf now. The reason was I already figured out what party I wanted. This is exactly the party I wanted. <laughs> Thank Grant because I like him as a tank. Uh, and taking the twins. I don't know why, I just, I just like this combo.
And plus, I don't have to think about the the, the little break because <laughs> at least. Although technically, I should probably do it because the uh, uh, braver is my better. So, so sorry. My friends, heed me. These are children of that man. I could do them no harm.
Are you right? No, it's not. Not too late. It's. Well, shit. has been expanded. Uh, upon learning the first to the, head, the trait in head shroud, consuming stacks of the newest shroud will grant stacks of void shroud in your face. Void shroud can be, then be consumed to execute actions such as your newest slice and the newest slice. So, just check out new things. I think it replaces So basically, my Bloodstock and Grim Swap um, gets replaced by a new slice when I'm in Drowning, which means I do basically Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, Near Slice, Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, Near Slice. Okay, 
because I will have, because I have five. So these will take five. So I'll in Shroud get five stacks of of uh, Mere Shroud. Each time I spend a Mere Shroud, it gives me a Void Shroud. So I do Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, Mere Slice. Void reaping, cross reaping, meter slice. And because I have five, it doesn't quite equal out. And that is probably just doing that point. Uh, but once I get up to 90 and I get Camino. Minia would be basically that, that, that final strike, stack strike. So it would be Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, Linear Slice. Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, Linear Slice. Yeah. Alternatively, it would be Void Reaping, Void Reaping, Void Reaping. Mere Slice. Void Reaping, Void Reaping, Void Reaping, Mere Slice. Mere A Grim Reaping, Void Reaping. Kids and mom. Hey, wait, wait. Are you fine? Wait, wait, wait. No, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. We got it. Handy. Don't worry. We can get it. We can.
Ay, qué chaval. I've been able to easily incorporate the new slice in the new slice. Yay, thank you. I got one piece of gear from the dungeon. Placed the, the piece of gear I just received.
I will admit, uh, it's been a while since I did this one, but all I remember, it was kind of tricky, so uh, this might take a few times. Nowhere near as many times as... <laughs> so. Okay, is that resolved? Well, no. This means literally play probably.
melhor passe. I did it one shot. Oh. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm flustered. Uh, I got the boss. And <laughs> one shot. Important part of the story. As I feared. Nope. Gotta play. What is it? The beast was there, and now it is no more. Yes? Indeed. We saw it plain. But you didn't, did you? I saw nothing. Not the blasphemy that perished here, nor the other men turned beasts. And because of this, I now see all too well. There is no ether. Where the creatures should be, I saw naught but emptiness. Emptiness? But that would mean... Recall the words of the Watcher. Twas a stagnancy of ether, a cessation of flow leading to decay and absence that led the ancients to conclude their star was dying. This is the same phenomenon. The instant these people are seized by the transformation, their ether begins to rot and crumble away like dried mud. Until, from their corporeal forms to their very souls, naught remains. The beast spoke with its dying breath. Surely, at least a sliver of the man it was endured. Mayhap so. But even if the process was incomplete, it was little more than a faint residue. God be good. You're saying they cannot be saved. Not by any means known to me. Or by any means at all, like as not. For there is naught left to save. They return not even to the ethereal sea. Even 
deprived of their master, they perpetuate his legacy of hate. Once proud sons and daughters of Thavnir, all of them, and now I spill their blood. Vitra, my friends, I am heartened to see you safe. You put your secret at risk. Those closest to me already know the truth. A truth I must now share with one and all. Vitra, calamity has come to Razatan. Our fair nation is rent by screams of pain and despair. More than ever, we require a strong leader to shepherd us through the storm. Reveal your true self to our people, Vitra, and guide us to salvation. What madness is this, I one? Thou dost forget thyself. Were we to reveal our duplicity, it would do naught but foster confusion and chaos. Nay, I shall remain the Satrap's loyal ally and do battle with the beasts. Easing hearts and leading the people to safety is thy task and thine alone. I ask that you remain at Ahewan's side, and render unto him what aid you may. I know not what lies ahead, but without you, Ra Zetan will not survive. Take me with you. I am as at home fighting in the air as I am on land. Take me with you. Were my words unclear, I require no assistance. Thy place is at Ahewan's side. Estinia, here. The last thing you ever wanted, a Link Pearl. We'd gain much from knowing your elevated perspective. And it'll keep you from getting lonely, which I know you know. <laughs> you heard the man. Seems I'm coming with you after all. Then I pray thy grip is iron. Be it on thy head if thou dost chance to. Enough. Now, shall we? This is Astinian in his element, fighting with the dragon. I fear it is as Vitra says. We will not survive this on our own. While I am loath to impose upon you again. I would insist if you did not. Tis the very reason we have come. Then once more I find myself without words to thank you properly. Let us return to the capital and plan our next course of action. I love Iowa. Our radiant host has, has eliminated the immediate threat to the city. Though our plan pains me to know these beasts were once my own people. 
There is no telling when or where the next transformation will occur. We must remain vigilant and steel ourselves for whatever is yet to come. I don't need any of these dies. Red. Red. Amigos is red. You may now enter Vanus Party with a party of NBC avatars to make use of this feature. Open the trust interface. Located under duty in the main menu. I one as burden is heavy indeed, yet he need not bear it alone. Forgive me, my friends, but I must return to Megaduta for the time being. There I better manage this crisis and dispatch my troops as the situation demands. In that case, we shall carry out an investigation of our own here in the city. We hope the residents can tell us more about the first transformation, the conditions under which it occurred. If we are can ascertain what exactly triggered these tragic events, it may give us some insight as to the possible situation. Solution. Time is of the essence. There's a split into three groups that we may cover more, more ground. At least A and I will, will see to pass Paxa's path. Anchor in your shoulder. Pray make for Dharma. I leave Arthur to Graha and you, Amigas. Any information you can gather on the first blasphemy or the manifestation of the final phase here in the city will be most helpful. When we have completed our respective inquiries, let us reconvene in front of Megaduta that we may might share what we've learned from with the satrap. Shall be off then. Arthur is home to the High Crucible of Alchemia. The alchemist forged many of our warden scales. Seems a good place as any to begin our investigation, don't you think? I spoke briefly with Nuhadi, the chief alchemist there, in her last visit. She'd be happy to answer our queries. Raz, now come out of you. Keep him on your side. Blah, 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 blah. We need to know the company thing. Did I get all the Ethernet shards? That's where I am. Uh, okay, it's just the Aetherite Plaza, which I think might be currently still the same. I was just doing that so I could determine what I might, if I had gotten. I, I couldn't remember if I had to do all the Aetherite shirts or Ethernet shirts. Make a quick check here. Nope. Still disabled. Red eyes? You were with the Scions who commissioned the scales for us, yes? I welcome you back to the High Court. What brings you here in these turbulent times? You are assisting the Sartre in investigating the crisis that plagues the city. Did you happen to catch sight of any of the creatures? I did, and that's what was going about my work. I was disturbed by cra crashing footsteps. So powerful that the very ground shook. Crash 
rushed outside and could not believe what I could hear. The night sky was burning. And suddenly I heard panic screams coming from the direction of Balsam's bazaar. In the next instant, a monstrous beast poked its head out from the midst of stars. A handful of the radiant rushed to the scene, only to be sent sprawling as the feet of its wheel propelled themselves scattered. Lastly, came from the vicinity of Mars. I'll make me feel useful. Thank you for sharing your tale. Well, I do believe we now know where we should be quiet next. To the bazaar, then. I must say it bears a resemblance to the traditional fabrics of Corvus. I wonder, really, given that it's just across the water. Not that I am much of an expert in Corvus and culture, of course. I have not had the occasion to visit my ancestral home since coming to Charlie, and like as not, I will never reside there again. That said, in recent days, I've felt more acutely aware of my heritage. I'm grateful for it. It is thanks to my forebears that I inherited the royal eye. And with it, the wisdom of ancient Alec. And so, well, I suppose, there's hope. Well, I simply hope that my countrymen are safe. But one day, when that calamity is but memory, I would like to see Corvus again, more than once. I have a feeling we might be Corvus, maybe not necessarily in this expansion, but in a future expansion. Or, it may be the exploration zone, much as Eureka was in. Stormblood and Boja and Zadnor were in uh, Shadow Branch. Forgive me, but my shop's closed until further notice. Needless to say, we have more pressing concerns these days. We have come not in search of wares, but information concerning the enormous fiend that tore through the bazaar. Did you pretend to witness anything? Afraid not, me friend. I was here the whole time, so I only saw it. His little minions made a mess of the place they did. While that was all going on, the great big one tore through the west side of the bazaar. They had better luck at us in there. If you are lost, perhaps I could be of assistance. Your offer is most appreci appreciated. We are not lost, but we are in need of information. Don't you know anything of the gargantuan beasts that were engaged in the bazaar? I saw it all, though I wish I had not. I was going about my work when all of a sudden a piercing scream cut through the air. I turned around and there was the fiend, his massive body burst into the that entryway with the force of a tidal wave, and it was gone as quickly as it came. This is a mercy. What is happening to the world? What am I to do? Now we're safe. Oh. Sit down, friend. The danger has passed, at least for now. If it's not too painful to remember, could you tell us what you saw? First, I heard the screams, then the horde of ravening. ravening beast. Ravaging. ravening. ravening? I don't think I've heard that term of ravening. Beast can charge into us unless it's supposed to be ravaging and if it's energy. Beast can charge into us. One of them is huge, bigger than a mirror. Mirror throwing people about like ragdolls. And it was eating them. I hid under the counters, saw others do the same, but the shrieking and wailing kept getting louder. More voices in the throng. Beasts or victims, I couldn't tell. I knew not what was happening, and I still don't. That is enough, my good man. You are brave to 
brave to share with, you, with us your tale. Many of your fellow merchants are safe. The High Crucible too has survived most of the end's case. Pray stay close to your friends and loved ones. Rest your body and mind while you're able. I suspect that that is the most we can expect the people here to tell us. I think it's best we can find a place outside the bazaar where we might rest and review findings. Well... I know it's a little, just a little bit of XP, but it's XP nonetheless. By the way, he's, 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 Judging for their accounts, the transformation has already occurred by the time the beast reached the bazaar, tore it through the west side of the bazaar, and headed towards the Etheran Plaza. In other words, blasphemy may have first appeared in this vicinity. That being the case, the people in that Nehani can surely tell us to us more. Going off to that enormous beast, are you? I saw it included the very, including the very instant that poor bastard transformed. That the gods putting him there. It started over there by the window. A few men merchants probably talking and drinking. Conversation must have taken a turn for the worse. Next thing I know, their leader, I suppose he was, buries his head in his hands and blackness was certain around him. And his whole body burst apart and there stands a hideous slavering beast. Massive and foul. Oh, gaping mods and bulging eyes. His friends start shrieking, then the black mist comes again, until the change takes them too. The stuff of nightmares, I tell you. A marriage, indeed. Incidentally, do you perchance know who these merchants were? Now, I'm a decorator by trade, not much cause to mingle with their soul. So, I mean, Leal, the barmaid, in chatting with them, though. She might know something, and then we, of course, get lag. I can tell because there's no sound. Here we are. Everything's happening. It's just the video and the sound isn't quite working. Even after repairing, repairing all that damage, it's take a while for business to pick up again. This is more proof that it's lag. I click into the next thing and it's like, oh, I kind of waited out. Not much we can do. Oh, how are you doing? Uh, Sadly, today we will not be doing an episode that comes out loud. We might be in a flashback. There we go. Then it gets us up. You mean the blasphemy? That's what the radiant has been call calling it anyway. I saw it too. We all did. We're standing here at the counter at Merid. As Merid. Meridi? 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 Meridi poured me a drink, and then suddenly there came this dreadful sound. Oh, this is, this is the guy. I don't look. A dreadful sound. Like a pained, angry groan. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. It turned, turned around in shock, and from an ominous cloud of black mist rose the creature, enormous and ghastly to behold. 
As for what happened next, to recall, it sends shivers up my spine. By some sp stroke of fortune, I was able to slip outside before the beast got its claws on me. But the sight that gritted me offered no solace. The blue sky above turned red as blood. Reading myself and the other survivors clung to each other for dear life until the radiant host came to our aid. Wait, did I hear you correctly? The beast manifested before the sky began to burn. I'm certain of it. The windows he here offer a clear view of the sky and I saw nothing out of the ordinary until the beast appeared and began to rage. It's back to the real. We passed on the way to Dark Oh, hello there. Welcome to Meridi's Me Mahani. We have come not for our vibrations, but rather information. You are Me Malil, yes? We are investigating the so-called blasphemy on the Saw Tribe's behalf. We hear that it was one of your customers, a merchant, that first underwent the transformation. What can you tell us about it? He, he was something of a regular here, especially as late. Kazal was his name. He ran his own consortium, dealing primarily in the exports of Thanderian specialties. It was through him we met Matsya. Yes, the name rings Bell. Didn't you meet them back on your first trip to Thavnir? If I recall correctly, Kazal ran a trading consortium in Yeramada. And it was there that you that you met Matsya's acquaintance. Yes, that's the that's the same Kazal, no doubt. Rather successful man, from what I gather. That said, it was clear he had fallen on hard times of late. Those ghastly towers popping up everywhere cannot have been good for business. Even now, with the towers gone, the collapse of the empire has led to all sorts of problems elsewhere. The market of luxuries is surely not what it once was. Nine times the head of a trading consortium indeed. Kazal was a compassionate man. Then, even as his own business suffered, he did what he could to provide the artisans, fishermen, and others who counted on him to sell their wares. Indeed, that was the very topic of yesterday's meeting, as far as I could hear. Yet, as they discussed matters further, Kazal's tone grew grave and grim. It was then that. that. forgive me. Not have you recall the memory if it brings you pain. If I could, I would ask just one more thing. Do you notice anything about unusual about this all in particular? Please, anything at all. I'm sorry, nothing springs to mind. Perhaps someone else can help you. This all lived for his work and had no family that I know of. His employees and associates knew him best, but they too are lost to us. Still, perhaps his neighbors know something. I do not. I can direct you to them, if you believe it would help. What do you say? Zal made his home in Kama, a nearby residential area. From what I gather, Kazal lived there since childhood and is known throughout the neighborhood. Come on, the name is new to me. How do we get there? I'll write down some directions. I cannot promise that you will find what you seek there, but nothing else is a start. Come, let us see where this lead takes us. Downside, it forces you to walk. Alright, this is optional, and I believe all it is is him saying what the directions are. Ask for directions. Let's see, after leaving the Nihani, Me to retrace her steps and head back toward the uh, Aetheric Plaza. Okay, I kind of already know where I'm going. We need to go here. Sadly, 
They really did make Rods and Han into a maze. <laughs> we have to come back here. We have to go up the steps. <laughs> we need to circle around here and cross the bridge. Of course, I was here before, so I could use the Ethernet shard. The only problem is, the Aether if I use the Ethernet shard... Stop me. I don't need directions. I know where we're going. And... Uh, This must be Kalma. You have arrived at last. Let us begin questioning the residents without delay. No doubt someone here will tell us about Kazal. Even recent events, I imagine many are taking shelter in doors. And I'm just gonna barge into their houses and talk to them. Marty! Ah, you say? Yes, I knew him since he was born. There were other uh, man who was born to be a merchant into a sin. Always early to depart and late to return. He had spent his days procuring the finest wares and seeking out winning customers. You could say, you could say it came to him as easily as me. Sadly, business was flagging of late. No surprise, would you? But with how dangerous travel has become, he has cooked up in his house from dawn until dusk the other day, no doubt racking his brain over a way to turn his fortunes around. Then at night I heard the door open, out to see Kazal sitting around a bench, his head hung low, a man with the weight of the world on his shoulders. I see, the situation must have been quite dire indeed. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing to speak of other than the troubles of the consortium. The same old Kazal, ordinary and honest and always. These questions you are asking, something happened to him. He wasn't caught up in that terrible incident, Kazal, was he? I don't travel much for these days, but my daughters told me not to venture outside. I can hear as I am, I mean, I heard you talk about that, these bizarre goings on. Rest assured, the city is safe for now. The situation may change without warning. I urge you, stay close to your daughter. Uh, to take refuge with the Satra forward. Mm -hmm. uh, could you come back another time? I just woke up and I'm not exactly in the mood for out of chatter. Well, that's one way to avoid the panic, I suppose. Pardon your intrusion. We may not have noticed, but a great danger has come to that. I encourage you to stay alert and prepare to flee the city should this situation turn dire. But before we leave you in peace, pray, pray allow us to ask a question or two. Did you know a local merchant named Kazal? If so, did you notice anything unusual about him recently? Kazal? I, I, I know him. In fact, we spoke just the other day. Like many others, his business was going to him poorly. Still, it seemed as though he managed to turn things around, but thanks to a generous order from Vader Fibers. Why, he was practically dancing in the streets. I haven't spoken to him since. I assume all went well. Gina ba Baha might be able to tell you more, though. As I recall, he's the one who broke into the arrangement. Gina Baha of... The, of Revade of Fibers. That sounds promising.
I'm just inside. Don't think I can jump back up there, so I'm gonna have to uh, take the long cut. Maybe it's a shortcut. I don't know. And hurry, I say. There's no time to waste. Pardon me, but you're in charge of buying and selling here. You have a few questions we'd like to... I'm sorry, but I simply don't have time to chat. If you haven't noticed, we have our hands full at the moment. We must carry all of our wares and equipment to safety before those accursed beasts return. In that case, might we be of assistance? Perhaps you could speak when the job is done. Very well. We can start by helping us move our equipment. Ask the others what to put where. And you can carry our fabrics. Go through that door and speak with Kamala. We will tell you the rest. Remember, these textiles are a livelihood. This area is for employees only. Out, out! While we were, I was asked to help you carry some stuff. What's that? You've come to help. Oh, praise be to Mindruva. Uh, kind stranger, I welcome your assistance. On your way here, you pass three storehouses, yes? I'd like you to carry the small crate to the prefall, by the storehouse near the hatchery. The crate of clothing is to Manua, and the massive crate there is to Sebmira, at the middle of the storehouse. Watch your back with that one. Those are all the crates we have already. Once you have been delivered, consider your work here complete. Okay, so it gives you some warning saying we have limited time. The thing is, it's super easy. So we start off with the light crate. We come over here, give it to this guy. Thread it is, then it come to the right place. We thank you for your aid. I think they give you like a full two minutes, and the thing is, it's not really that far. If you have a crate of finished products such as carpets, clothing, and, and the like, pray bring them here to our primary storehouse. A crate full of clothing, it is. I can take that off your hands. Many thanks for the delivery. I'm assuming that, in reality, this the distance between these is a lot bigger. Alright, lift with the legs. There we are. Alright. Okay, it says that it's heavy, but... I don't feel like I slid down. I'm the warrior of one. I see you're quite the brawny one, one, aren't you? Good thing that you never know when you need to defend yourself in these unpredictable times. Great for fabrics, it, is it? Exactly what it's hoping to receive. Here, let me put that away for you.
Oh, you carry a lot of crates and stores, storehouses, you say. So quickly, too. I have never seen anyone so strong. I and my associates will see to the rest. So please return to to Jin Baha, Jin the Baha, and assure him our work is proceeding apace. To tell the truth, we are grateful for this distraction. Too many terrible happenings of late, but generous souls like yourself give us hope that we may emerge from this trial even stronger. I pray we meet again in more peaceful times. Then as I asked, have you? If Kamara is satisfied with your work, then so am I. You have done us a great favor, Turner. I too have delivered the instruments and apparatuses entrusted to me. You both have my thanks. With our wares safely stored, we will not lose any more, more to those feats. I take it that your establishment did not escape the attack unscathed? We did not. Thankfully, most of our workers had already left for the day, but those of us still here saw it all. We looked to the burning skies in confusion, and then, before we could even begin to make sense, a hideous creature burst through the door, shrieking, ran for our lives, and one of my colleagues was not so fortunate. He cried out a scream of agony. Such terror! Next sex incident. Instant, he too was about to fear some claws. The sight of it caused another fellow to panic, and then... He too transformed. I'm sorry. There was something you wanted to ask? Indeed. You knew the, mer you knew the merchant Gazal, did you not? I believe he had some dealings with your establishment. Gazal? You know him well. He had arranged for his consortium to deliver a large shipment of fabrics, but in the end he received a better offer and had to turn it down. I understand his business is struggling, but so is ours. Most of our most reliable trading partners agreed to transport the goods for a much smaller commission, and we hadn't been fools to refuse. I felt terrible to withdraw the offer, but we must understand we simply had no choice. He tried to put up a brave face, but when I delivered the news, his dejection and despair were plain as day. He said he'd discuss it with his associates, but I could tell he was all but given up hope. You remember what we saw in Vano's body, yes? Soldiers and jungle dwellers pushed to the very brink, brink turning to peace one after the next. It would seem the same phenomenon occurred here, or craftsmen attacked by the fiends as well as those that witnessed it all, all undergoing the change. I suspect that everything began with Kazal. By all accounts, it was he who suffered from the most profound and piercing despair. Wait, could that be it? That mu such intense emotions were what triggered this transformation. Much remains unclear, but I believe we are drawn closer to an answer. At any rate, we must discuss our findings with the others. Rock says, thank you for your time. We are to reclaim with the elders in front of Mega Dita, will we not? That should be just outside. Then you luck they are already returned from their investigations. My friend must take our leave. I pray that your establishment be spared for the tragedy. But remember, your lives are far more precious than anywhere's. You are ordered to flee, do so without hesitation. Indeed, I thank you for your concern and pray you to take care as well. All right, let's try. Let's try.
I am literally standing on air. Aha! I did it. There you are. You've spoken with the survivors. Yay, voice acted. Indeed. We thought to share what we have gleaned, that we might together gain a greater understanding of present circumstances. Fortuitous timing. Alizé and I completed our own investigations not long ago. Then we should take a moment to compare notes. Shall we begin with the two of you? Exposition. So the merchant Karzal was gravely concerned about his business in the days preceding his untimely end. The tales we heard were much the same. The first victims to be changed into blasphemies were all overcome with anguish of one manner or another. Then those who saw their loved ones stolen before their eyes succumbed to a similar panic, setting in motion a chain of transformations. Fear, unease, despair. These negative feelings serve as a catalyst. If so, then it is not unlike the calamity that befell the ancients. With their creation magics, they unwittingly gave form to untold horrors. Had they simply lost control, surely it would have manifested in many forms, not all of them monstrous. Yet somehow, this phenomenon is triggered solely by the darkness in their hearts, a common thread with what we now witness. Common, but not identical. While the beasts the ancients faced were forged with magic alone, those of today are born of sentient beings. Why remains to be seen, but there is one fundamental difference between us and our predecessors. Our souls are sundered, whereas theirs were not. Perhaps that single variable makes all the difference. If I may, there was another detail that troubled me. We have it on good authority that Karl Zahl's transformation took place before the skies began to burn. What? If that's true, then the situation's more dire than we realized. It means even if there's no ominous sign presaging the final days, anyone, anywhere, has the potential to become a beast. Even in lands we thought safe, even as we speak, Look! It's the Sartrap! The Sartrap! Thank the heavens! My countrymen, I am relieved and heartened to see you strong and safe. While the danger has not yet passed, far from it, allow me to assure you that the beasts that raged within the city walls have been exterminated to the last. 
Outside this sanctuary, the brave men and women of the Radiant Host and our dragon ally continue to battle our unholy foes. I pray these tidings put your minds at ease and help you calm your hearts. Have faith that we shall soon conquer this terrible trial. Your Excellency, is there any word from Palaka's stand? My grandson was bound for there yesterday and I, I worry for his life. We are still awaiting a report, but I promise you, as soon as I have all to share, You, Your Excellency, I bring grave news. You are? I, I'm Matya of, of Akyali, a humble fisherman. Ah, I remember you from our first visit. Uh huh? Wait, y you're. But no, that can wait. When the skies turned red, I set off for Palakas stand, fearing for the safety of a friend. But as I drew near the village, I saw dreadful beasts all about. No! Gods have mercy! Your Excellency! Save my grandson, I beg of you! We will spare no effort to save all we can, but you must remain calm. Calm? You tell me to be calm? You saw those beasts? They tore our bravest warriors limb from limb! What if we are too late, huh? Did they catch him? Sink their fangs into him? The fangs! <laughs> Get away from her! Now! before it spreads. We'll handle this. See the townspeople to safety. Rod, as fast as you can! sake and your own. Yes, you will survive. You must.
be strong, my friends. Fear not, for we will defeat these abominations. Brave men and women of the Radiant Host, lend your Stola and Thancred your aid. Let not a single beast escape. The rest of you, flee this place. Carry the wounded if you must. Head indoors or underground. Above all, stay calm. No beast will follow you. We will see to that. Alphano! Alize! Leave the city to us! And make for Palika's stand at once! Matsya, show my friends to the village! I promise you, they're more capable than the host's finest! R right! Go with them, will you? We will save these people, as many as we can. You must go to the next part of the story! And collect more ether currents! Here we are, outside of... Uh, we're gonna actually pause this here. We're gonna do the down up sort of thing, although I think the refresh probably did, so it might, might be a little longer down up. Uh, and we will continue with part 11 of Endwalker. I am currently 80, level 86. I am ahead of schedule, but right now the quest that I'm on beyond the depths of despair is currently 85. One level ahead, not that far, I suppose. I think I might have just pushed it, actually. Body that I think was 85, 85 dungeon, so. That was the 85 dungeon. Uh, that. Uh, so, uh, we will be back in a few minutes. I just need. <sighs> I need to make more tea. But, nice little break, and I think I'm gonna Head back in review. For those in YouTube, you can